We're turning our attention to hurling now. I'm delighted to say Noel Connors is with us for um, a slightly more difficult conversation. Noel, good morning to you. How are you? Um, <laughs> I'd like to say pretty good, but not so good. Where do we start? What 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 is it about the round robin, and what what what? How do you feel about this whole thing at the moment? Like, where is water for hurling? That's a very very difficult question to ask. Um, it's it's so hard to know, and it's it's not just something that has happened since the round robin. I think that we've struggled for quite a large period, particularly underage. And obviously, if your underage structures aren't in place. It's very, very difficult then to transform those guys coming through um, development squads into senior squads. It's it's challenging enough to do it with really good structures in place at underage, but it's a hell of a lot more difficult when you don't have that underage. So I think that that's probably the starting point. The starting point is to try and, I don't know, put some sort of shape on what underage structures are in Waterford. We've probably neglected that for quite a long period, and it's something that we really need to review. There was a strategic committee put in place there a number of years ago, and there was some uh, kind of conclusion and outputs, but I don't really think they were implemented in any uh, real meaningful way, and I think that's really important. You now start to see the likes of your clears, which we saw the weekend, particularly even underage. They were fantastic minors, under 20s. They're obviously in their 20 Munster final, uh, doing really well in the football as well. And obviously their their seniors are more more or less true to uh, the All Ireland series in hurling. And you you know you can't. It's, you look at Leinster rugby. I watched a bit of Leinster and Munster. When I was flicking between both, and you look at the depth and the strength they have. Albeit they got better again, but. It's the academies that are really bringing forward Leinster rugby, and it's it's no different for Waterford. If we want to be successful and try and stay in that top tier, we really need to focus on our underage structure. Because uh, I haven't got a chance to read all of uh, Anthony Daly's piece today, but he's like, at some point, you have to stop just blaming the manager uh, for what's going on. And I, it did feel like there were young players coming through at a decent clip when Derek McGrath was in charge and obviously there's like really good club hurling it seems certainly uh, the standout team is capable of holding it their own against anybody else but they don't always have it their own way the whole way through the water for championship and I could be wrong about that but it did feel like there was a competition for them there and so that there should be enough strength for the team to be able to compete or to produce 30, 35, 40 senior hurlers who are capable of competing at the right level at the moment, but they seem to be getting further away. Yeah, and like even what you just said there, Jared, like there's so many different parts to that that like scream out at me. Like Ballygunner going for ten in a row, and like that's not on Ballygunner. Like they're doing everything right under age, and that's at like primary school level. They're putting in Trojan world, and they're starting to see the benefits of it. I don't know. Last year, <laughs> when I looked at some of the results, they were beating club teams within you know every stage. If it's the the group stages, the whole way through. They were beating most teams 10 plus points. Okay, hour sorry, I thought they were getting a bit more of a game than that. They're obviously not. No, they're not. And right. like, that's that's like, that's like not a game. That's not a Ballygunner thing. That's not a, a negative on Ballygunner. They're doing what they're doing right. But uh, it's probably for the rest of us now to try and fill and fill that void and try and bridge that gap. And again, that's not, that's, you know, a generational thing where you have to put it up in like starting like we have an academy under fours uh, and you have to start at that stage and try and build it up. So you're talking about this in maybe a 10-year period. And I would be very mindful of the fact that that might actually happen at Waterford. But we actually are struggling. Like I looked at, I was looking at some of the stats. So since since uh, 2015, we've played minor. Uh, we played 26 matches. We've won five, we've drawn one, and we've lost 20. So that's 19% return. Since we won the All-Ireland under, under 20 in 2016, we've lost every game since. Like, that is not a good return for Waterford Ireland. And obviously, again, we talk about the pathways on to it. Like, if, if you're not winning underage, it's very, very difficult to inspire lads to go and play with the senior setup when it's in so um, it's so demanded on persons. And, like, the reality is, if you're going to commit to 35 hours plus a week, you need to be winning. You still need to be competing, but you need to be winning. I think on average this year, we scored, like... I think it was like 17 or 18 points on average with no goal in the first three games. Uh, and that's not going to do it. So, and again, as you said here, it's not down to the manager. It's down to the underage structures that filter the whole way through. And then you would hope that you'll have a successful senior team that can compete. 
that might not be down to the manager. No, but what what is down to the manager? I guess is the style of play and the decision making in terms of man marking and that sort of thing. I was listening to James e. O'Connor speaking on on off the ball with ourselves after the match, and he was talking about Waterford not playing to their strengths, uh, and he said the players look confused by what the identity of the team is. So, do you, do you feel like that's the case? And and if so, who's that down to? Is that down to the manager or the players? Um, yeah, look, there's. I'm very mindful of the fact that I would not necessarily blame the management or indeed the players. The reason for it, now that sounds like I'm not blaming anyone, but I'd be mindful of the fact that these are lads that are really trying hard to be successful and mm-hmm. to win. Also with Davey, like Davey is probably putting in 70 plus hours a week trying to get the team to perform to the best of their ability. We've seen like what he can do against Limerick in the first round. And I think that that's what he's trying to emulate every day you go out. Bearing in mind that we've had a massive turnover, I think since 20, 2019, we've had 18 fellas leave that team. And I think, uh, I kind of listened to it briefly, I didn't listen to the whole thing, but like Jackie with Jackie Turner was on last night on the Sunday game talking about like leaderness. Like it's it, that's a very kind of harsh yardstick to hit people with when you consider the fact that Jamie Barron is probably the oldest there by uh, maybe a three or four year period. And he... Um, you know, he was a three or four year period because of so many, so many people left maybe three or four years ago. Uh, and a lot of the other lads are quite young and inexperienced. And the reality is for Warford Hurland, it's always been the case. We don't necessarily have the depth to even go back to the days of like your Dan's, your Ken's, your own Kelly's, your Milan's, etc. The reality is like we had like maybe 70 or 18 players that were at a standard to play at inter-county senior level. We've always struggled with depth. So when you consider all those things, this league basis is never going to really work unless you have, as I said before, a really uh, developed team with 35 fellas that are willing to play and able to play every day you go out there. Um, and that's the reality. We even look at Limerick where we look at their bench and you're saying, wow, that's incredible. But even now with the likes of Sean Finn been out for 12 months, you're kind of saying, who's going to fill that void? And Limerick are not going to be as good as what they generally are on the basis that he's gone. So I think you have to be mindful of so many different variables. It's easy to say and point to that Davey and matchups, that type of thing. But the reality is, he's the one that trained every night. He's the one that's mm. watching all the matches. He's the one doing the analysis. The, the matchup, I guess, that got that got the, I guess, the one that was in my head was uh, Daryl Lyons marking Tony Kelly. Tony Kelly obviously has a field day, and the argument was made yesterday that Lyons perhaps better utilised as a midfielder or a half forward or even a wing back, maybe. So maybe that was the the matchup that I was thinking. Look. It's not easy to mark Tony Kelly, let's be honest, but yeah. was Daryl Lyons the right man to put on him? And the other side of the question is that who do you put on him? Uh, yeah. You know, the obvious thing is you say, oh yeah, you don't put Daryl on him, but then like, who do you, who do you put on him? <laughs> uh, so it, like, I understand the point and like, again, as you said, Shane, like it's it's very easy, like say, you know, who, who marks Tony Kelly? Is it who, <laughs> who keeps Tony Kelly quiet for, for 70 minutes? Uh, it's a very, very difficult thing to do. If you can kind of keep him quiet for 30 or 40 minutes, you'd you be doing particularly well. Um, but I think like the core of the issue is for Watford Ireland to be successful. And again, as I said, it could be a 10-year period where Watford might not necessarily be successful because you really need to look at the underage structures. Like Clare have put in phenomenal work. Limerick have been doing it for years. Um, you need to put in like things like your coach is underage to make sure that you know, if you're starting out under 12s, that you're not necessarily like just picking like 24 lads under 12s that are at the best age because they might be a lot bigger and stronger than the other guys. But like the reality is by the time they come to 14, will they still be the best guys? But they would have got the experience of playing there. So the natural thing is to pick them. Whereas if you look at Cork a number of years ago, they didn't put a team in a Tony Forreston because they said they'd have their own tournament under 14. Um, and they bring 100 plus kids together. Like that is the way in which you should be doing it because what you need is you need more people availing of your programs. You need to have succession plans on, right, this is what we're doing under 12, this is what we're doing under 13, 14, 15, 16. So by the time they get to minor, that they're actually athletically prepared to, to be able to take the hits, do the hard training, and also to perform. Albeit the fact as well is that's hugely important, the athletic side of things. However, you need to still have a good hurling coach in, in place as well. Like there's really good hurling coaches in Watford We've looked at the likes of, obviously, you mentioned Derek McGrath a few minutes ago. You have the likes of Pat Carney. You have Don O'Rourke, who's a hurling coach with uh, Carl Corners at the moment. He was with the Watford Camogie for a number of years. They really, really well. Like, there is really good hurling coaches. I think it's probably where we need to, like, a reset button where 
not that you forget about the seniors and the older lads for a period of time, but you nearly need to focus on the younger lads, put all your time and energy, and you would hope in a 10-year period that you will start to see some sort of transition from those guys into senior setups where they're really, really competitive and doing really well, and then hopefully win it. This is, um, you know, hard work and, and difficult, and it doesn't feel like there's any fix coming down the road? No, and that's... I put, that's the, the more frustrating as in look the reality is and I will never say GA should be professional and I'm quite the opposite I'm, I'm very much like stick to what we're what we're about we're about community we're about family we're about you know all of those things that make the GA amazing and wonderful and different uh, but what we do need to do is put some structure as a county on what that looks like so if you have to employ someone like an athletic performance coach to basically put plans in place and have like three or four like younger people in specific areas that can look after we'll say if you're down in East Waterford for instance if you're Valley Gunner or Passage etc the whole way into like Mount Sound or Moore de la Salle and so on uh, you put a, a kind of some sort of you, you might go to the arena out here in SCT or Waterford uh, you use that as your base and you train there three or four times maybe a week and you have someone that's employed on a part-time basis to basically watch what they're doing and you do that the whole way through um, and you obviously have someone overseeing it you have someone in Mid Waterford and you have someone in, in West Waterford because if you keep doing the same thing again, like that's expecting different results, that's crazy. Like everyone knows that. So you need to look at like what can we do and what can we implement to, to, to make us successful? Because the reality is we are a hurling county. We we perceive ourselves as a hurling county, even though a lot of West Waterford would be considered football when you look at like Denier, you look at Balanacorti, etc., Rackormack. Um but we are a hurling county and that is the reality. And we need to put as much time and energy into the young kids. So by the time that they come to minor, that they're going well beyond that 19% of winning rate um, over the last number of years. No, really thoughtful stuff. Thanks a million for joining us this morning. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Uh, Noel Connors there with a uh, really brilliant insight into the situation at Waterford.